Hello guys, today we will dive deeper in SCADA BR and we will use a traffic light as an example. We will use a traffic light with a push button for the pedestrians. So if it's pressed, it will skip to the green light and an emergency green light mode that can be activated from the HMI to trigger a green light instantly and that's for emergency services. We will use the open PLC on Windows and the Arduino Uno as a slave device. You can also use the visualization in your web browser on your phone. So it's mobile, you just have to be on the same uh, Wi-Fi network. So let's get started. First of all, we will open our open PLC editor and open the project. I will leave it in the link below. We will look at the example we're going to use for this basic traffic light. I used the SFC language to do this. It's the same code as my native Arduino traffic light with some additions for an HMI green light, for example. So we will start at the red light and if the HMI green light is on, it will automatically go to the step one, the green light, by skipping the other steps. We will generate an ST file that can be run by OpenPLC on Windows. So I will give this a new name and I will save it. After we've done that, you can close OpenPLC editor and open OpenPLC runtime. If you don't know how to do this already, you should watch my previous video how to connect Arduino Uno with OpenPLC. I have this shortcut on my Google Chrome so I don't have to push it in every time manually. The password is OpenPLC, OpenPLC. Then we go to Programs. We choose the file we saved. And we open it. And then we upload the program. You have to give it a name. So we'll call it Scala BR Traffic Light for YouTube. And we upload the program. This takes a few seconds. After we've done this, we go to the dashboard. And before we start the PLC, we're gonna set our slave device. I will use an Arduino Uno, but you can use other slaves as well. And then we start the PLC. It's important that PLC is started, otherwise there is no communication possible with Modbus. In the monitor tab you can see the inputs and outputs and also the locations. That will be important to configure in Scala BR. Then we close it. And we go to the Open PLC project page and we click References. We go down and there we find a manual to installing Scala BR. First you have to download the virtual box, I already did that. Then the virtual image file and from there we will start. So after downloading it, you click on Oracle VM virtual box. And we're gonna import the image. So know where you saved it. I saved it here. And we will open it. Click on next. And you click on import. This will take a minute. After we've done that, we go to settings. There we go to network. And you make sure it's attached to the network adapter you really use. So double check it because it can be a reason why it isn't, why it doesn't work for you. I also have some uh, errors here from my display. You can uh, ignore that one. And then for my USB, 
you don't need USB on the virtual machine. So I'm gonna turn off USB 2.0 because otherwise I get an error. Restore the virtual box. So important to note is that the virtual box, you can see it as a different PC. The startup of this virtual machine takes a minute or so. After you start up, you get this IP address. You're gonna need it to log in. I made a shortcut, but it doesn't work anymore because the IP address changed by reinstalling it. So I will change it in the column above. So it works. The password is admin admin. The first time it takes a while, but after that ScalaBR is pretty fast in my opinion. Um, you get some information, some errors at the start. I will just uh, acknowledge them all. So if you click on it, you go to the alarm list and you can see the alarms. And we try, we start with acknowledge them all. So we have a clean alarm list. Then we go to data sources. Then we select Modbus IP. And we add data source. We will give it the name OpenPLC. On Windows. We change the update period to 500 milliseconds. So it's more or less in real time. The timeout I set to one second. And it's important the transport type is set to TCP with keep alive. Then the host. For the host IP address, it's important to know that you have to connect to the OpenPLC machine. So SCADA BR is running on a different machine in the virtual box so on a different computer. So you have to give the IP address of the computer OpenPLC is running on or on the device. It is important that you don't connect to the slave devices, but directly to the device OpenPLC is running on. In this case, it's Windows. So we have to find the IP address of our Windows machine. We will use this to connect to OpenPLC. And then you activate the connection. If you have connection and you do read data, you will find these addresses. Uh, important to note is for addressing, you can use this Modbus slave addressing, or you can just use this formula. So you have the IP address, you multiply it by eight, and the bit address you add it to the previous sum. So in this case, the address is 100.0. So 100 times eight plus zero is address 800. Then we will add these points. The first one we will call red light. For the offset, we will use 800 because it's address 100.0. And we activate the point we will do this for all the three lights for the green light the orange light and the red light the lights are all coils
After we repeat this step for the lights, we'll add the HMI emergency uh, button that we will use in the HMI. You can't write to inputs with Modbus. So you have to use an output to write to the output and use the output in your PLC. Then we have one input. So as previously mentioned, you can't uh, write an input. So this is just to monitor the push button for the pedestrians. And now we'll go to the watch list. You have different lights and you will add them to the watch list. And now you can see the status of the outputs and the inputs. Now we finally go add a graphical view for this project. So we press graphical view. And then we will add a new page because there are no pages. We will call this the main page. I made a background that I will use with a professional graphical program MS Paint. And I will load it in right now. I'm not going to show you how I made it with uh, MS Paint. It's uh, way too difficult. And we upload the image. So this is just our background. Now we have to add elements. We're going to add a binary graphic. We press on the plus button and it will pop up in the middle of the screen. We will put it where we want it. Then we have to define the point. We will add green light to this point. And then we have an image. The largest LEDs are LEDs 32. And then you have a zero image when the status is zero. And a one image when the status is one. Uh, I forgot to save the point value. So I will do that again. So it's important to save every time you do something. And there you go. You can drag it a little bit where you want to. And we will add some other points, some new lights. So we do this for the orange light. The same, so we add the points, we save the points, we add a graphical graphic. We will use LED 32, we will scroll to the orange. We don't have orange, so yellow LEDs. And we select the zero status and the one status. So we'll speed this up. We will do this for uh, all trees. Now we'll do it for the red light. After that, I after that I will also do this for the other light. It's quite a shame that you can't use copy paste, or I didn't find how to use copy paste. So you have to do it all by hand. So it's a little bit tedious. Now we will speed it up. The nice thing about Scala BR is that you don't need to compile your program every time you make a change. So you see your changes in real time. That's a cool feature. After we added the lights, we will add a button to represent the button from the push button on the Arduino side for the pedestrians. So we choose button right and we add an element. We drag it to the point where we want it to. Then we change the point to push button pedestrians. You don't forget to press save like I did. You press save, yes. And then you have to label it when it's true or when it's false. So when it's true, I will set the text to pressed. And when it's false, I will change the text to not pressed. But because this is an input, I will not able to send a Modbus commands to the input because Modbus doesn't support writing on inputs and it's uh, logical also. So just to let me know if the push button is pressed. 
so I do this for both sides. In real life you will have one button that it's so you can save on inputs. Now we will test it. So if we test the button you will see it's not settable. That's because you cannot write inputs in Modbus. It's not supported by the Modbus protocol and it's also logical that you can't overwrite inputs. Now we'll add the HMI button for emergency services. So we choose the button, write and connect the tag. Then for the text we got a new call it emergency mode active when it's turned on and the label when it's off is activate emergency mode. I know it out of experience that it can be tricky to call your buttons the right names so to know when it's active or not. I also changed the text height and width so it becomes a little bit more visual because it's an important uh, button. When the button is pressed, the lights will turn to green automatically. Now we'll add this light that is flashing when emergency mode is active. So nobody forgets to turn it off again. If you want to watch the screen on your phone, you have to go to this IP address in Google Chrome and you have it. And there you have it. You have to log in also for this screen. The username is admin admin. And then you can control and see the inputs and outputs from the OpenPLC running on Windows. I hope you liked this video. If you have any suggestions, if you have any suggestions for the next video, please let me know in the description and until next time.